Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, we're going to be designing a slider component for a website. So let's get started. So this is the slider component that we're going to be designing in this video. We have our main section frame, the section body, in the main section frame, we have this shape, this uh, vector path, this blob shape, and then we have our slider component. And the slider component consists of four patterns. We have a pattern for a header, a card, a progress, some sort of indication of progress, and some pretty common patterns would be like pagination dots, or you'll sometimes see one of four, two of four, and this is just to show the user some sort of indication of the progress they've made through the content in the slider. We have our arrows, we have one that's disabled, one that's active, and this is to tell the user that they're at the start of the slider and they can only move right. Once they move right, both arrows will be active. So our title component is just a frame with auto layout applied to it. Inside that frame, we have two text elements with eight pixel padding between them. Then we have our card component, which consists of a image and a description. The description is a frame with two text elements inside of it. They have two pixel padding between them and the description frame has auto layout applied to it. Then we got this progress bar and we have our slider arrows, which is just a frame with an icon inside of it. So once you click the arrow, you should be able to see the progress bar increase in size and both arrows become active because now you can go forward and back through the content. So yeah, let's start designing this section. So I'm gonna go back to the desktop frame where we had created these components in a previous video. And I'm gonna start creating my section uh, that's going to have the slider component. I'm just gonna increase the size of my desktop canvas, or sorry, my desktop frame. And then I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard to add a frame inside my desktop frame. And this is going to be my main section frame. I'm gonna name it section slider. I'm gonna align it to the bottom of my hero frame and just increase the size of it. And then I'm going to start by creating my header section. So I'm gonna to toggle the columns on by hitting Control G. Then I'm going to add a text element inside my section slider frame. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to add a text element. And then I want it to span 12 columns. I'm gonna to go to blindtexteditor.com and I'll post a link to the description of this video. I'm gonna grab some dummy text, copy, and paste it into my text element. I'm gonna give this text element auto height so that my width is always fixed, but my height is responsive relative to the content inside of my text element. I'm gonna increase the size of my text element, bring that up to maybe 48. I'm also gonna change the line height. I want it to have the same line height as my H1, and my H1 has a 100% line height. So I'm gonna go and apply that here. change this to light that looks good and then I'm going to create this into a new shared style so I'm going to click on my four dots create a new style and this will be our h2 I want to have a paragraph text underneath my header so I'm just going to duplicate my text element just drag it to the desired space I want to have eight pixels that's eight and then I'm going to detach my H2 style. I want it to be using a paragraph style. Great. Then I'm just going to select both text elements and hit Option Command G to place them inside of the frame. And I'm gonna call this frame section header. And then I'm going to apply auto layout to this section. So I'm gonna click plus on auto layout and detect that eight. So now if I were to change my header, my component would respond or my header would respond. Now all that's left is to turn this into a reusable component. So I'm going to cut my header and paste it into my atomic elements. Then I'm gonna to go to the top toolbar and click create component. Now if you go to your assets tab, 
you'll notice that you have a section header. So let's go back to our desktop frame. Inside our section slider frame, I'm going to drag and drop this section header in. Perfect. So now let's start creating our card component. Our card component consists of a image and a description frame that has two text elements inside of it. So let's start creating the image. I'm gonna click F on the keyboard to add a frame. I'm gonna have that frame span three columns. I'm going to give it a height of 376. And I'm going to call this frame all image. I'm going to give this frame a fill. I'm going to change my fill to image. And then I'm just going to select an image. And I'll provide all these images in the description of this video. Cool, so now we have an image. Now let's turn that image into a reusable component. One thing I should mention is be careful to always maintain the same aspect ratio of your image when you're resizing that image for a tablet or mobile. So let's turn this image into a reusable component now. So I'm just gonna cut it and paste it into my atomic elements. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this image into a component. So I'm gonna to go to the top toolbar and click create component. And while I'm here, I'm going to create a description for this image. So I'm just gonna add a text element, have it be the same width as this image for now. I'm gonna say, just add whatever dummy text. I'm going to give it a paragraph style. So detach this H2 give it auto width and give it a paragraph style. Then I'm going to duplicate it to create another text element. And this is going to be our header. So this is a header. I'm going to detach this paragraph style. I'm gonna create a new uh, header style. So I'm gonna just increase this to maybe 24. That looks good. Maybe give it a light font fade font type, just like our other header. And then I'm gonna create it into a shared style. This will be our H3. Let's just have it. Cool. So I'm gonna turn this now into also a reusable component. I'm gonna put them both inside of a frame. Option Command G, apply auto layout and then rename this frame to card description and click create component. You go to assets, you now have a card description in your atomic elements. So now let's create our card component. And our card component is just a combination of an image and a card description pattern. So I'm going to go to my molecular elements. I'm gonna grab an image. And I'm going to grab a card description. Have them be at 16 from each other. I'm going to put them both inside of a frame. Option Command G. I'm going to call this frame Tall Card. Then I'm going to turn this frame into a reusable component. So now if you go to your assets, you'll have a card component in your molecular elements. So now let's go back to our desktop frame and all we have to do is just add our card component into the canvas. So I'm gonna go to assets, drag and drop a card in. Space it, let's say at 40. Sure, that looks good. And I also wanna change the color or the background of this section to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna give it a fill to go with like a navyish color. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. I'm gonna have to change or edit some of my components here because we can't see them with the background. So I'm just gonna grab my header, go to selection, have it take on the white shared style. I'm gonna do the same for my card description. I'm just gonna select my card, double click to select the description, 
And for selection, I'm gonna give it a white fill as well. Then I'm just going to duplicate this card now. So I'm gonna hold Option down and drag. So that's that 24 pixel padding. Then I'm just going to hit Command D. And changing these images is actually very simple. So all you have to do now is just select the card, double click to select the image, go to the fill, and select another image. And this won't affect the master component because this is only an instance of the component. The master component will still have the original image that you placed. I'm gonna do this with all my cards. Perfect. And now let's just group these cards together so it's a little bit more organized. I'm gonna hold shift down, select them all from the layers panel here. Then I'm going to hit Command G and name this group cards. And we're almost there. All that's left is to make the progress bar and the arrow keys. So let's make the progress bar. So I'm gonna hit Control G again, toggle my uh, columns. I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard to insert a rectangular object. I'm gonna have it span three columns. I'm gonna give it a height of two. And I'm also going to give it the white shared style that we created previously. Let's bring this up to, let's say 40. Let's do 48. Okay, let's just rename this to progress bar. Also, while we're at it, let's just turn this navy into a shared style. So I'm gonna to go to my four dots, create a new style, and call that navy. And also let's add our little blue or path, vector path into the frame. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it from a object that I had created previously just to save us some time. Paste it at the top. Now we have this transition. Let's just increase the size of my section slider. Bring down my header and cards a bit. Have that be uh, 232 from the top, that sounds good. And this is just a circle that I edited its vector points. So you can just go to objects, get a circle, and then click on these edit object. And you can go edit the points and make your own blob shape. You can just edit these points and make your like own bloopy blob shape. And I've seen so many designers spend so much time actually making the blobs. It's like a full-time job being a blob maker. But I'm going to use the one I created earlier and I'll post it to the description of this video. So now let's just make these arrow keys and finish off this slider. So I'm gonna to go to my atomic elements. I'm going to add two arrows, a left and a right arrow. So I'm gonna to go to my material design plugins. Gonna click arrow. Make a left arrow. No white grid there. Uh, okay, it's inside our icons frame. Good. And now let's create a right arrow. Arrow. Okay. Let's move him. got our arrows. Let's turn these guys into components. So I'm gonna click create component, create component. Now if you go to your assets, we have two arrows. So now let's create our arrow button. So I'm just gonna add a frame and I'm gonna drag on the canvas. I'm gonna have it be, say, 56, let's go with 56. And then I'm going to just add a arrow inside of it. Cool. I'm going to rename this frame to arrow button. I'm going to turn the fill off, give it a border radius of 100. But yeah, let's give it a black stroke just so it 
matches. And then I'm going to turn this also into a component. I'm actually going to have it live inside icons as well. top create component so now I have an arrow icon so if I go back to my desktop frame underneath my progress bar I'm going to add my arrows I'm going to go assets add an arrow which notice that these cards are one off Perfect. Cool. I'm going to change the selection color of this arrow. It's going to be have the it's going to have the white shared style. Then I'm going to duplicate this instance. Have it be at let's say 16. And then I'm going to change the uh, arrow icon inside here. So I'm going to go to my instances and go with the right arrow change that selection to the white shared style and we're good to go. So now we have two arrow buttons. These guys are going to be, uh, let's say 24. And we're done, we're almost at the finish line. Let's just clean it all up and we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna bring down the slider section a bit to be at 104 from the arrows. 6, 5, that should be 104 padding from the ball. Perfect. So now let's just bring down our desktop frame a bit. And then I'm going to grab my header, my cards, my progress bar, and my arrows. I'm going to put them all inside of the frame. So I'm going to hit Option Command G. I'm going to call this frame Slider. Great, so now all that's left is to turn the slider into a reusable component. So I'm gonna cut and paste it into my molecular elements page. Paste it next to my hero section. And I'm going to say create component. Now if you go to your assets tab, you have a slider, but you can't really see the text because it's white inside this component. So actually let's just change that in our master component so we can see it in our assets tab. So I'm gonna detach my white shared style, make it black. I'm gonna do the same for the card descriptions. And I'm gonna do the same for the arrows. Detach and have that be black. Did not do them for the title. Okay, let's do these titles as well, detach, black. So now if you go to your assets tab, you'll be able to see kind of what the slider component looks like. So now let's go back to our desktop frame and just drag and drop our slider in, turn the columns back on, and we had it aligned to our 12th column, our first column here. Get it 104 from the bottom. 104 and now let's just reattach our shared style so I'm going to select my header and select the white shared style I'm going to do that for my card descriptions as well these are all going to have the white shared style and my arrows give them a white shared style. Great, and this didn't affect our master component. We can still see how our master component looks like in the assets tab. Great, so now we have a reusable slider component. So in this video, we created a reusable section header, we created a reusable card, and we created a reusable component. We also started adding more to our shared styles. We made an H2 and an H3, and we added the shared navy blue color. Be sure to check out the next video where we will be designing a basic two-up column section. I'll see you there.